Welcome to the Besties in the Books podcast, guys. I'm Liz. (laughs) And I'm Ashley. And today is going to be our first episode, our mini episode of the Harry Potter series. Harry Potter. You guys, we're doing it. We're doing it. For the next eight weeks, you will be receiving (laughs) for Mythful Future (laughs) six book. (laughs) What's happening? Books are floating around. I know. It's, it's just, it's, uh, I felt compelled to get out my Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone because that's what we're talking oh, about today. Cute. Yeah, yeah, exciting. Yeah. Mm-hmm. My good old paperback. Yes. But yeah, so for the next eight weeks, we'll be here. We'll be here. Extra. Because we were here before, Extra. but now we'll just be here again. <laughs> this is our bonus series. Welcome. Welcome in. Um, we are reading Harry Potter for the first time, Ashley and I, as adults. First time. Full-fledged adults. If you're, we're doing if it. If you're new here, uh, this is our uh, Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone. We're going to be doing things a little bit differently since this is a mini episode. So... We're not going to have, if you know, you're used to our faves and fails of the week, if you're used to our smash and passes, we're still going to have our Tuesday episodes. You'll still be able to hear that there. But here we're going to yep. have a little bit of a different format. So I'll take a second yeah. to kind of go over that with you guys. Um, but just know you in our usual episodes, it's usually like 15 to 20-ish minutes, let's be honest, of spoiler free. <laughs> um, here, it'll probably be like the first five-ish minutes spoiler free before we dive in. But that way you guys can hear our star reviews, kind of like our yeah. basics on the book before we dive into our deeper thoughts. Yeah, Yeah, Um, And then also, this is coming off of our Satanic Panic episodes um, one and two, the books that traumatized us, Mm -hmm. and then also delving more into what kind of led our parents to be so against us reading Harry Potter in the first place. Yeah. Which has now turned into us reading it for the first time as 35 and 36-year-olds. So... Here we are. Yep. And I know a lot of you guys are with us on that. Um, so just yeah. to give you a rundown briefly on what the format's going to look like, we're going to go ahead and start off with, like I said, our spoiler-free star reviews. Um, with It's going to be a rapid review, guys. Yeah. Because you guys <laughs> know we're talkers, and we can go off on our tangents. Well, what's funny yes. about it is Ashley and I really aren't talkers, but like when we're talking to each other, it, yeah. it gets crazy. That's just what happens. They, they, yep. It's true. It's true. It's facts. Um, So rapid reviews, one sentence or less with a star review. So you'll get that from Mm -hmm. each one of us. Um, Then, so here's the challenging part. (laughs) (laughs) So then we're going to (laughs) recap. We're going to recap the plot, but it has to be in five (laughs) sentences or less. I'm laughing because you guys, full transparency as we actually filmed this video last week with with um not enough guidelines we had no guidelines. it was still we had <laughs> still an hour-long episode mm-hmm. so it was nothing mini about it which you know some people don't mind but we're just we're trying to do we're trying to make this piece be in the series because we want to do other books popular books too that we weren't able to read growing up after this so we want to make it like a concise specific type of way and we just went over the entire plot from cover to end yeah and it and we had a great time and it was fun but we were just like you know what it's a lot of info dumping especially for a book that most people have read or or just came off of reading and just kind of want to know our thoughts yeah Mm -hmm. so we're kind of just doing it more reactionary style and kind of telling you our takes on it especially reading it you know as an adult talking about what if we read as a kid yeah all of that Mm -hmm. stuff yeah. But it was funny. It was funny. <laughs> it was a good, it was, it was the first time that we've ever filmed an episode, looked at it and scrapped it and started over yeah. because normally we just fly by the seat of our pants and it's fine. But I feel like this was the mm-hmm. first time that we we're like, we kind of might need a plan. Like yeah, well, which we always plan. have a plan, but, we needed but a, it's almost like a pl- a real we tried plan. to change the first one. We tried to change it from the first format, but then we ended up doing the whole middle section the same as a usual book, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, dissection, which we're trying to, you know, I mean, you guys let us know if that's something that you would rather have. Yeah. Would you rather like a full dissection from front to co- from front to back or, you know, listen to this and see if you like this style yeah. for these mini Give episodes. The since they are supposed to be mini. Yeah. So we can always do a live too to discuss. We like doing lives because that way we kind of get your guys' feedback and stuff on different plot points that happen, you know, just like our book club style that we do every month. But Yeah. So yeah. so the plot in five sentences or less, <laughs> yeah, you guys, <laughs> you know, this was, a, this was a labor of love. You know what I mean? Yeah. And then um, we're going to wrap the episode up with a fun piece of like Harry Potter-like 
we, we're calling it trivia, but like a fun fact, like something like yeah. that, um, that, you know, Ashley and I, either one of us will come up with and we'll kind of like bounce back and forth depending on the episode. So that's the format. That's what you can expect with us today. Um, yeah. But before we get into that, we just want to say thank you so much for being here. Thank you, guys. Seriously, thank you so much. I think when this is being posted, it will be our 25th Woo! week. That's great. Uh, podcast. So we have 25 full length podcasts available for you anywhere you like to listen to your favorite podcasts as well as YouTube. So please follow us again anywhere you like to listen to your favorite podcasts and subscribe to us on YouTube. It helps us out so much and it lets you guys know when we post, which is every Tuesday and then every Friday for these mini episodes. Ooh, so that's awesome. That's awesome. Thank you guys so much. Follow us on Instagram and TikTok at Besties in the Books Podcast. And where you can be reading Harry Potter with us if you're just joining us for the first time or you don't know what's going on <laughs> is we're doing a book club of the Harry Potter reads on Fable. Yep. So you can check us out there at Besties and the Book Club. So if you just search that on a Fable app, you can download it for free on the App Store and join us for not only this, but any of our buddy reads, monthly book club, all that. But all the stuff. feel free to jump on in now if you were like, ooh, I want to read Harry Potter the first time or ooh, I want to reread it for the 19th time, whatever. Go ahead and join us. Comment along because we're filming this one now, but we're continuing on with the whole series. So yep. pick up at any time. If you don't like the first book, then jump on into whichever <laughs> one. It's, yeah. what is it? What, 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 is, what do I like to say about Choose it? Choose your it's, adventure. Uh, Yes. To choose your adventure. Mm -hmm. It is. And I do. 100%. I have heard from a couple of you guys that you are going to hop on for like whatever your favorite book was. In yeah, the series. I love that. Yeah, so do that too. Honestly, Whatever, I love it. You know, yeah. we're even going to do an episode. So episode eight um, in this series will be about the movies. So, mm -hmm. you know, which I haven't watched since they came out. So it's been a long time. I don't remember anything, which is great because everything is new to me now. Yeah. Um, it's awesome. Nothing spoiled for me because I'm like, whoa, whoa. Like, I don't remember anything. <laughs> um, so, yeah, even if all you want to do is just watch the movies and then come chat with us about that. Cool. You know what I mean? Yep. yep. Sure. All right. So we're still in the spoiler free section. It is time for our one sentence star review. Would you like go. to go for you want me to go first? Do it. Go. Harry Potter one. <laughs> Harry, po <laughs> Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone was a book that I greatly enjoyed because it was a nice, cozy fantasy read that was easy on my brain. Nice. Four stars. How many stars? Four stars. There you go. Yeah. Boom. Um, and we had briefly talked about, like, what would we rate it star-wise as an adult versus what we would rate it star-wise, like, if we were ha to, would have read it as a kid. Yeah. Um, and we would have been in, what, like, fourth or fifth grade, I think we figured out, like, something like that when these came out. Uh, yeah, somewhere sure. somewhere Something around like there, I feel like. Okay. Yeah. So uh, four stars into an adult. I feel like I probably would have rated it a five star as a kid. It, was, it yeah. would have just been, like, right up my alley. So, yeah. For sure. All right. Cool. All right. Cool, cool, All right. Cool. You go. Love it. Love that for you. <laughs> All right. So, for me, I would rate it now as an adult. Ah, I want to say three stars. Mm. And people are going to come after me. But I have a <laughs> sentence for you. Okay. Okay? Yeah. No more, no less. No more, no <laughs> to less. To explain myself slash why. <laughs> to defend myself. Okay. Three stars. I really enjoyed it, but it was a little bit slow and too much Quidditch. That is the perfect review. There you go. Yeah. Done. Yeah. Boom. Mic drop. Okay. Yeah, it's great. And too I can't Quidditch. explain myself, so I won't. So no. <laughs> if I was a if I was a kid reading this for the first time, I probably would have given it four stars for uh -huh, sure. Okay. You know, I don't know if I would have been a five star yet. But we got like what seven more books, and yeah. I have this thing with first books where oftentimes it's hard to be if it's in a whole series for it to be a five star book for me right from the get because it's just the world building part. And yet it's a necessary evil, <laughs> yeah. If you will, yeah. See, I felt <laughs> oh, we can't we can't do it. We can't wait. I explained myself too much. I cheated. I'm you kind of did cheat a little bit, but I will say I did. okay. Here, I'll come but back and that's all. That's wait. That's but let but let me explain myself further. That's just my star rating <laughs> system. So that's why you can't just that's keep going. Fine. Other <laughs> this just Other means people need to talk to. This defeats the purpose of the one sentence oh, review. Oh, I'm terrible. It's okay. You did a great it's okay. job. Yeah, no, no, no. <laughs> I'm just saying your review was great. Your one sentence review is perfect. It yeah. encapsulated exactly how you felt about it, I think. Yeah. Um, I, you know, just to kind of go back from what you said about the world building, I almost feel like since this was 
written for a younger age group. Um, the world building, what, I mean, it was light and easy, right? So I feel like for oh, yeah. me, it must have just like come at the perfect time when I needed something really chill for my brain. Yeah. And so I think that's why I really enjoyed it because I was like, great. It just is what it is. It's like Halloween time, Christmas time, cozy, per- yeah, perfect. Yeah, I did love that. Yeah, yeah. it was the vibes. Mm-hmm. It was good vibes. So yeah. do we have a bonus review? That we need to talk yes, about? Yes, so I'm actually reading these along with my eight-year-old. She actually just turned nine, so eight to nine-year-old daughter for her first time as well, reading out loud, <laughs> which which is fun. I accidentally started off with an English accent, so I've had to continue <laughs> that, and she has called me out when I tried to not do that. She's like, what are you, what are you doing? What are we doing here? Where's your English, ac- English accent? Where's the characters? I'm like, okay, it just dries my mouth out to talk so much. Okay, but anyways, so we're loving that. We're having a great time. So I have her review. Perfect. And sh- her review, and I quote, is, she's not under the same parameters, but <laughs> so these are her star <laughs> rating slash review. I didn't restrict her to one sentence. Um, She said, four stars, because, yeah, maybe there was too much Quidditch. And then I said, (laughs) well, do you really feel that way, or is that just because of me? And she's like, well, okay, maybe I kind of like the Quidditch. So five stars. I really enjoyed it. I really liked the ending, and I can't wait to read the next one. Yay, cool. So there you go. You heard it from the eight- to nine-year-old slash fourth grader. There you go. Perfect. Another five stars. What a bonus. (laughs) What a bonus. I love that. Yeah. Okay, and I do have to say that... Because I feel like I need to say it. Since this is our very first time reading this series, and like you mentioned, you did watch the movies a while back, so you don't really remember. Mm-hmm. It's only been a few years since I re- watched the movies. Did I say read the movie? I don't watch the movies, whatever. Okay. Um, so I do know some things, and I kind of wish I didn't. Yeah. Because I, ju- I definitely feel like, even though I feel like the movies are doing pretty good so far, I mean, that's one book, but, <laughs> um, you know... I can start to... G- I already know something. So yeah. I, I wish I went into it with a completely fresh set of eyes. Yeah. But there are still some surprises. And obviously, they go more in-depth in the book. So, yeah. you know. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, all right. So the next part then... So I guess uh, buckle up. It's time for spoilers. Oh, yeah. Baby. I forgot what the Harry Potter song was. So I, don't even, I was going to do that. I can't even really. I, I was going to go. Do, 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 but that's Jurassic Park. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't matter. Yeah. Just whatever doesn't comes matter. to your brain. It's fine. Yeah. Everything's fine. You, that's your cue. Oh, for those who don't know that I make a weird spoiler noise sound when we're getting to spoilers. Oh, yeah. So if you're just here for Harry Potter mini episodes and you don't listen to our full length episodes, <laughs> first of all. Go, That's on go you. do that. Yeah. <laughs> go do, go that. do yeah. that. Second of all, yeah, it's the noise that it's Ashley noise. makes whenever. That way you have no excuses to tell us that we didn't give you a warning. Yeah, we just want to make it very annoying and obvious and... And very clear. <laughs> jarring. A little jarring. That little spoilers weird. are coming. Yes. Up ahead. So yep. so here we go. I've got... I was going to inch my head, but then I was afraid that I, I have like little space buns and I was afraid I was going to mm-hmm. hit one. So I just did something really weird with my arm. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so anyways, if you're watching Those the video, Those are watching sorry. the YouTube, yeah, um, you get that treat. So, all right, Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone, in five sentences or less, the whole plot. Let's go. Here we go. Harry Potter is a 10-year-old wizard who lives under the stairs in a closet. <laughs> <laughs> I can't get through this. Okay. Who lives under the stairs in a closet because he's a wizard orphan. <laughs> <laughs> who was taken in by his abusive aunt, uncle, and cousin. Okay? He one. One. He doesn't know <laughs> he doesn't know he's a wizard until Hagrid, the magical gentle giant, comes and gets him. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> comes and gets him to take him to Hogwarts School of Witchcraft and Wizardry. Two. Great. Yeah. Harry meets his new best friends, Hermione, that I have a really hard time saying that, and Ron. <laughs> They're sorted into House Gryffindor and also meet his nemesis, Draco Malfoy, who was in Slytherin during his first year. Ellipsis. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> I tried to <laughs> find ways to make these sentences <laughs> Cheated long. a little bit, yeah, but yeah. that's all right. <laughs> and they play, well, all it says is, and they play a bunch of Quidditch, period. Ah, yeah, okay. yeah. Three. That didn't deserve a full sentence, so yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Um, Harry finds out that Voldemort killed his parents but couldn't kill him, so he's been in hiding until he took over Quintrell's body in order to steal the Sorcerer's Stone, which can bring him (laughs) back to full capacity. (laughs) Four. 
Harry, Ron, and Hermione figure out where the Sorcerer's Stone is and solve a series of riddles to find it before Voldemort can. And with Dumbledore's help, he is banished again. But he will be back. Five. Five. <laughs> it's not bad. But he will be back. It's not that bad. That was good. Yeah. That was great. Yeah. That was good. Oh, I loved it. Yeah. That was perfect. It was great. Five sentence summary. What do you guys think? I think she did good. <laughs> I mean, it was hard. I'm sure that was hard. I'm sure that was hard considering we talked about it for like an hour last week. I'm sure that was hard. <laughs> it was hard. Like 400 pages. It was hard, but it was nice because it was like, yeah. what is important? Quidditch mm-hmm. only needs to be mentioned just this one time. Just one word. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, we don't need to, we don't need to like, keep talking about it. It's- Listen, there was a lot of chapters in this book about it. And I get it. People love it. They're either people come after me because they love Quidditch, but yeah. I just don't care. And um, the one sen- half a sentence was great. Yeah. So okay. Yeah. So let's talk about our favorite part about the book and our least favorite part about the book. Ooh. Okay. Okay. So <clears throat> this could be anything, but we also are going to talk about our least favorite character and our most favorite character, so we can't make it a character. So it has to be something that's not a character. Um, I would say that my favorite thing about Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone was the... Literally the Halloween and the Christmas time vibes. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'll change mine. (laughs) I, I love it. I now understand... Why people rewatch these movies around the holidays? Mm-hmm. It's like I get For it sure. now. It's like a, it's a and feely. it makes me excited to do that too, it, right? Yeah, totally. I'm like, oh, I'm totally gonna do that now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love that. It's, it's like vibes. I already, I already watch, you know, all of the uh, Lord of the Rings at Christmas time. So now it'll just mm-hmm. be another epic saga that I can enjoy. You know, like how cool mm-hmm. is that? Um, yeah. So I'd say that was my favorite part about this first book. Um, Doesn't it feel so like? Like, uh, being at summer camp, too, like, with the the table. I mean, obviously not, like, there was not amazing food at the summer camps I went to, but they have, like, the feasts, and it's just, I don't know, it's so cute with everybody there. Yeah. Reminds me of what uh, a summer camp would be. Yeah, totally. No, I get that yeah. kind of vibe from it, too, yeah. for sure. Um, my least favorite part, I kind of had a hard time with this, because, you know, I... I don't know. Picking like a least favorite part. I would say that pr- that was probably just having to read about like how horribly like yeah. his aunt and uncle treated him and cousin. Yeah. Because it was like, uh, you know, I think we mentioned this the first time that we filmed. <laughs> the first time we filmed it, tried to film it. <laughs> no, like, um, you know, when you're reading it as a kid, it might just come across as being like, oh, my God, they're so mean to him. But like reading it as an adult, you're like, literally, this is like child abuse. They're keeping this kid in a closet. It's yeah. so sad. Um, so that yeah. was a little bit like, ooh, like I didn't really love that. But it was a necessary evil, right, to like be able to tell the rest of the story. So I get it. Mm-hmm. He has to come from somewhere, yeah. you know. So what about you? What was your least favorite part and most favorite part? Well, we know your least favorite part, <laughs> right? Everybody take a guess. <laughs> <laughs> least favorite is Quidditch, obviously. Mm. Like, I get it. I get it. And I and I like the character building that goes on with it and all of that. So it's a, it's necessary, but it's just a little much. So it's a little much for me. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, yeah, that would have been my second one, too, is just I didn't even though watching the movies there, you definitely don't realize how horrible they are to him. As you do when you read the books. And it's like the first few chapters yeah. about that. Because mm-hmm. they're like, and they're running away. It just doesn't make sense. It's like, well, then just let him go. You guys clearly don't like him. Let him go Let him go to Hogwarts. You don't have to deal with him for all year. Totally. Doesn't make any sense. It doesn't. It really doesn't. <laughs> uh, and my favorite part, oh, that's hard. I love a good, like... Um, you know, a good ending, a good satisfying ending. And I want to say mm-hmm. it actually probably was when Dumbledore is talking Harry through his emotions and everything that he's feeling and everything he experienced of what he could tell him uh, after the, you know, after he defeats Voldemort in that part or after he uh, un- unveils and figures out yeah. Coral's dis- plan and disguise and everything. The, the, I did the really creepy like the trials. On the back that of was the head. cool. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, but I actually really like the part that really stuck with me was Dumbledore's and, uh, discussion with Harry. And I felt yeah. like it was a really good take that he had on death. And I think as a child, I would have really appreciated, uh, you know, a couple of paragraphs like that. Yeah. Of just like, you know. Totally. It was just such a good, there's so many good little life lessons, I think, in there that are easily digestible for kids. 
So I would agree. That's my favorite well, especially thing because of like that, that whole idea that like Harry was able to solve the riddle and retrieve the Sorcerer's Stone because yeah, because he had good intentions because he was pure of heart yeah. because he didn't want to take it just to use it for himself. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, that was great. Yeah, that was so cool that if they see it. If they see in the mirror what they want, they would see what they want from the stone if they want to use it without exactly. pure intentions. That was so cool. I liked that. It was great. Yep. That's what we like in fantasy. Yeah. That's great. It's like a, Some nice a reflection of, yeah, exactly. A reflection of real life, um, real life themes and symbolism. Yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. So, all right. So then favorite and least favorite character. You go first because ping pong. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, I mean... My least favorite character would definitely be. Was it Dudley? Is that the is that the his cousin's name? Oh, Dur- D- yeah, yeah, Dudley. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I block him out all the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's terrible. <laughs> he was my least favorite character for sure because I was just like, oh my god, I already like annoying like annoying kids. No. Like, I cannot. Yeah. And then it's like he's so mean to him and he's just terrible. Yeah. So it's like he to me. Like, obviously, you're not supposed to like the villains, but it's like the villains yeah. have a purpose, though. You know what I mean? And I, yeah, yeah, I, get, yeah. I get that Dudley has a purpose, too, to, like, show, you know, from whence he came kind of a thing. Like, we need to know Harry's past, but at the yeah. same time, I just really, really disliked him. Yeah, there ain't no fanfic written about him. No. He's just a spoiled brat kid that gets everything he wants. Yeah, to do. and who's terrible, you, you know? know? It's like, he had it coming. Yeah. Um, and my favorite character by far was definitely Dumbledore. Yeah. Yeah, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I feel like he, yeah. he, you know, he's got, it's kind of like what you were saying. He's got the best quotable moments. I feel like, you know, he's, he's the, I, you know, we were Lord of the Rings kids because for whatever yeah. reasons those were allowed in our house. <laughs> and so, Which, yeah, we didn't talk about enough on, you know, <laughs> books banning and stuff. Yeah. Maybe we'll have to make another episode. <laughs> But like a- because like yeah, why did my our, my whole family was obsessed with Lord of the Rings? Yeah, and my dad read all the books multiple times. Like yeah, that has just as much magic in it as, as this. this. It's just yeah. not presented as it's presented in a different way. Oh, and it's a female author. But anyways, yeah. So um, you know, it's like it. it we always loved Gandalf, right? Gandalf is, yes. is the is the comforting character. He's the rock in the middle of this like tumultuous situation who comes through. In the 11th yeah. hour. I feel like Dumbledore, right, he's supposed to serve kind of a similar purpose. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I really enjoyed his character a lot. Yeah. For sure. Mm-hmm. Now, uh, w- should we have rules where we can't pick the same things? No, that you, way we have- you can pick the same okay. thing. Yeah. Because, yeah, for sure, Dumbledore. He's not in it enough, obviously, this one, but he is my favorite so far. Yeah. Love him. He was great. All the other characters were still developing, too, though. So That's true. Who yeah. knows? And I feel like every, every, we're going to do this every time. Every book could be different. Mm-hmm. So, because honestly, I thought going into this, it was going to be Hagrid. But. That he was going to be your favorite? I thought he was going to be my favorite. Oh, okay. Uh-huh. Yeah, because I love him in the movies and he loves all the animals, but he just really puts the kids in jeopardizing situations. Yeah. And he doesn't handle his, uh, his shit. <laughs> yeah. And he kind of drinks. And he lets the kids do his dirty work. He kind of drinks a lot. I don't know. I was. His yeah, parents- I mean, he literally gave away the secret. Yeah. to them to that to freaking quarrel or whatever yeah like <laughs> like hello in the bar so, yeah i don't know that yeah. kind of like rubbed me a little bit wrong because i'm like i i get it like he's supposed to, what did i call him like the you know magical lovely gentle giant and i understand yeah. but then at the same time i'm like he's kind of like reading it for the first time as an adult you're kind of like he's a little yeah bit exactly like an alcoholic guy <laughs> Who likes to break well, the rules. Alcoholic groundskeeper. Yeah, exactly. Like, like, doofus <laughs> that only puts the good intentions of animals. Like, and, which listen, yeah. we love our animals. But still. But like, p- help, help the kids out yeah. a little bit. Yeah. Stop putting them in compromising situations. <laughs> so I think that, I think that's where the discrepancy is. It's like, as an adult, you're kind of yeah. like, hmm, hmm. Yeah. I don't know. Hmm. Yeah. So. So there's that. And then my least favorite character, I mean, take your pick. <laughs> Like, uh, yeah, probably the the dad, the stepdad. Uh, he was terrible, uncle, too. Uncle Vernon, uncle Ver- not Uncle Vernon, Uncle Vernon? Yeah, that sounds right. Okay, yeah, yeah, Uncle yeah. Vernon. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, Uncle Vernon is the worst. Yeah, he's, he's the pretty, worst. He's pretty He's terrible. really angry, so I don't like it. Yep. Okay. Mm-hmm. Given all of this information that we now have, my, de- <laughs> my detailed summary. Yeah, I'm doing weird stuff with my hands again. <laughs> I loved it. Um, For anyone listening. So, do you feel... 
I'll just ask you. I'll just pose the question. Yes. Do you feel like this warranted, this book warranted a ban? Well, uh, no. <laughs> Obviously. <laughs> do, do Am I surprised? Like, do I think my parents still would have banned it if they read it? Mm. Yeah, probably. Same, same, same. Even though we just talked about they love Lord of the Rings. We talked about in that same, the second Satanic Panic episode. We watched Hocus Pocus every, every year in my house for something, for some reason, when it came to books, it was different. Yeah. And I don't get it. But there was definitely, you know, a lot of, there wasn't, uh, it's weird because there wasn't as much magic discussed as I thought. Mm -hmm. Like they're talking about spell, like my parents were worried about spells being interwoven in the freaking pages or whatever <laughs> and there really weren't that much that much they would yeah, they're worried that we're going to learn how to do spells there really isn't that there's no learning of spells involved i guess like i could say you know like yeah. it's not dude. that in depth yeah i mean it's a magic system written for let's assume fourth or fifth graders right like yeah. it's not going to be like this complex magic system and it builds or so we hear that it builds right which is yeah. great because it grows with the characters awesome um but you know it's that does, I feel like the bottom line is that none of that matters once it's like, I think I underlined, you know, because I'm reading on Kindle. It's like I underlined the second he gets invited to Hogwarts School of Witchcraft. Yes. And wizardry. That would have been the kiss of death. Yeah. That's it. That's like, all, honestly, that's if all they just taken. left it at wizards, yeah, it, it probably, probably would have been, been fine. fine. Mm -hmm. It's that word, craft, on the end of witch, that yeah. like trigger something yep. i think in that generation yep of just or well you know at least that sect of that generation is like witchcraft oh <gasps> yep 100 it's traumatizing it's a traumatizing word and we now we kind of know the backstory of it which again if you guys want to know the backstory of the satanic panic and kind of we like you said kind of gained a little bit of empathy for our parents and like saw where their reasoning was coming from at least yeah you checked out that episode because liz did amazing research on it and it was so good i loved it oh, yeah. so yeah no i yeah. mean it was really enlightening but i think that you know i agree with you did it warrant a ban like do i feel like there's anything in there that you know now that i'm 36 years old do i have kids no but like if i did would i be like absolutely no under any circumstances should this book even be in our house yeah like no i would never feel that way there's nothing yeah. in this book that i think you know would uh invite the occult <laughs> into our house. yeah um, i mean i'm literally reading it to my eight-year-old right now yeah, so yeah, yeah yeah um so i would agree with you but i do think that literally all it would have taken like even if my you know parents had decided that they were going to you know screen screen it read it ahead of time to see if it was appropriate as soon as those words were said yeah out it would have been out that's it. Yep. No questions Case closed, asked. Book closed. Yep, exactly. Unfortunate. And f unfortunately, because like I said, my favorite part of the book, and I think it would have been as a kid, is just Dumbledore's one on one with Harry, where he's mm. discussing, you know, the end of the lives of the people that were living six hundred years old, and like mm. kind of what that meant, and like we talk about death and being scared of death, and how to kind of digest it easier as a kid. Yeah. You know. So there was a lot of. Nice little life lessons and learning opportunities within the book that is easily digestible for children in such a lighthearted way where it's this isn't presented as fact. You're no. not going to, unfortunately, get an owl and a letter sent and inviting us to Hogwarts. We're really upset about that. Even at 35, I'd accept. But you're not going to get that. Like, this is just meant to be a nice, cute story with a classic tale of good and evil well, and sorting through the different characters who, you know, like are, you think that they're the good guy, but they're actually the bad guy, you mm. know, and having to navigate that world in a way that's digestible because it's fiction. Well, and, you know, one of our followers brought up a good point that, you know, because they had actually posted a while ago something about um, all these topics about not being able to read Harry Potter. I think it was Harry Potter specific. Um, mm -hmm. And brought up a really good point that, you know, if you're looking at classic kind of like what you, what some might consider like Christian tropes, like good mm -hmm. versus evil and, you know, ultimately good prevailing, this would be right on track. 
Yeah. Right on track. So like Harry's not falling into the dark side. Yeah. Like, I mean, we don't but know. But the temptation we're, could be there we're later. Only Who on knows? Book one. Yeah. So we don't know. I mean, but I'm, I'm assuming because I haven't heard in that and it didn't happen in the movies, but who knows? Well, here's a perfect <laughs> example just to go off on a really weird tangent, though. Like now that you said that, getting you yeah. know, sucked over to the dark side, were my parents against Star Wars? Absolutely not. Nope. And we did all the things. Dude. Okay. Go to the dark side. Check. Mind control, check. Evil <laughs> evil powers, check. Like, literally all of the things, but because it had nothing to do with, quote-unquote, witchcraft or magic, it was fine. But it's like, okay, that's not magic. Yeah, that's magic. I remember magic. thinking that as a kid, like, with the lightsabers and all that's that stuff. Magic. I'm like, this isn't, the force isn't magic? Okay. Yeah. That's when I was kind of, like, you know, figuring things out, like, at that turning leaf. I'm like, wait yeah. a second here. Well, that's, Why? But that's what makes that's what makes Star Wars so great, because it's the convergence, right, of, like, <laughs> where does science end and magic begin, right? Yeah. None of us really know. But that's the thing is, like, you know, tar- talking about going over the dark side, as far as we know, I mean, we're only on book one, but, like, Harry didn't yeah. obviously go over the dark side on book one. So, if anything, it's about him defeating evil. But yeah. maybe it's because he's using witchcraft to defeat the evil so that inherently makes him evil too But honestly a lot of it like in this particular thing a lot of the the trials was he even using magic really just like hermione yeah yeah, hermione was using the knowledge that she has of these herbs and what happens when you mixes it and you know what that sounds like (laughs) cooking (laughs) baking Okay. Hey, no, like go on, talk about side tangent. Here we go. Buckle up. Remember when we were reading um, the witches or trying yeah, to, yeah, and neither yeah, of us yeah, finished it. Yeah. It's like a historical account of the Salem witch trials, like what led to, I mean, the possibilities of what was really going on. And I thought part of that one of the chapters was interesting because they're talking about like these Puritans with extremely the extremist beliefs and they are basically doing what would be considered witchcraft right now they're yeah. mixing herbs and potions and bat toes and they're like putting <laughs> total <laughs> witchy things you would think in it right like a, a eyelash of your stepson or whatever and mixing it together and trying to heal things because they don't know, there's no medicine yet right other than leeches and bleeding out you just so. you just go out and you get a bat toe and you throw it in and you hope for the best why not why you not? Hope, you hope, yeah like a lot of this sound a lot of that puritan culture sounded like witchcraft yeah. you know so it's just funny because it's like okay okay yeah i forgot where my tangent was i mean where it started it doesn't matter because you guys got it it just got me thinking like <laughs> Do you, what do bat toes look like? <laughs> I don't. Oh, they're. I think they're like little like cute little, little claws, things. right? Little cute. Yeah, yeah a little claw like, with little nubs, like, <laughs> but in a cute way. Yeah, because totally. nubs can be bat not good. But I think the bat hands. I think they're cute. We'll insert a picture. Because <laughs> why not? Okay, so, oh, I figured out where my tantrum was. That Were they actually doing witchcraft right. to defeat him? Or just cooking. Because she was using logic and yeah, knowledge. totally. And cooking. And, and cooking. cooking skills. Uh-huh. Figuring out which one had the what, you know. They're just in home ec. That's what's going snuff. on. They're, home, they're in home ec, yeah. which we all took. Yeah. And then he was playing chess. Ron was playing chess. That's strategy. Yeah. That's not, other than the pieces are moving by themselves. What is it, like you said, Star Wars. Yeah. Lord of the Rings. When isn't that at play? Yeah. And then Harry Potter, uh, I could just call him Harry. I think we're on a first name basis. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> what was he even doing? I don't remember how he defeated him. Oh, he's just looking in the mirror. Yeah. Okay, yeah, sure. Yeah. But again, he didn't use his magic. No. He used the magic. The mirror was already enchanted what was. or whatever. So, yeah. Give me a break. Give me a break. <laughs> I agree. I agree. Okay, so we don't think that it weren't a ban. How did it, how did the book make you feel? What were your feelings? I liked it. You liked it. Yeah, I mean, I liked it too. It gave me, it gave me like, I thought what was interesting was it gave me nostalgic feelings, even though I did not read it before, like when I was a kid. Yeah. And so yeah. I liked that because it reminded me, it like took me back to, like in a good way, it took me back to mm-hmm. like remembering being around my friends when that I was that age and how yeah. excited they were to read it and how into it they were. And, you know, like, going to the movies to see it. Like, all that kind of stuff. It just kind of, like, took me back to that time. And I liked that feeling. So it made me feel nostalgic. Yeah. Somehow. Yeah. Like, I'm hoping that kids soon have that 
some some kind of movie or book can come along that kids can get amped about like that again because mm. it was it was like a even though we weren't a part of it <laughs> i love inside jokes we'll love to be a part of one someday <laughs> no um like even though it was like a big you know worldwide yeah phenom. thing yeah phenomenon that they all could kind of commesmer commesmerate on i don't yeah, know words, but commis- it's, commis- it's cute. commiserate yeah. collaborate so <laughs> cohabitate, cohabitate. <laughs> <laughs> conglomerate conglomerate mm-hmm. all right let's move on okay all right <laughs> so we feel good we feel good we like it, it makes us feel good yeah. and nostalgic and cozy and all those great things that we like yeah yeah so okay. are you excited to read the next one slash do you feel that there are any unanswered questions um that you have like that you're excited to have answered or that you're upset didn't get answered in the last book I'm excited to read the next one. I'm especially excited because my daughter's so excited Mm. because I got to say at the ending when everything's getting unveiled, she was like, oh, it's Snape. Snape has to be in Mm. on it. So for her to be, she was like up in bed and I usually make them lay down, but she was just like, you know, on the edge of her seat, getting up like what, what? And when it was quid, or I keep calling him Quidditch quarrel. Yeah. When he was revealed, she was like, what? Like it, it was hilarious and cute, and I loved it. So that made me like even more excited, and yeah. it makes me want to bring talking about it with you and talking with her about it makes me want to bring up my star rating more, just because yeah, the like excitement that it creates. And maybe I would have felt differently if I didn't already know that was him. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So see, I didn't know anything, so I was like, yeah, that's what? great. What? Yeah. Love it. Mm-hmm. Also, I, I'm jumping back to that. Thing. I also thought my daughter was going to get a lot lot more freaked out about certain scenes, like mm. with the unicorn blood mm. and like freaking them drinking it and the dying. She had no <laughs> reaction. So it shows you kind of like with the Disney movies and stuff, like as adults, you're watching it and you're like, oh my gosh, this is horrible. But then like as kids, we're not picking up on any of that. Yeah, so when I was reading these books, I was like, oh no, she's going to get really freaked out when it's freaking Voldemort's face on the back of his yeah. head. And she didn't even react at all. Obviously, it's different to see it than to hear it. But it, but all the more reason to be able to read it because it's not as bad as as a kid. We can digest things differently. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. So I'm really excited to read the next one. Unanswered questions, not like that. I felt like needed to be answered yet. Yeah. Same. You know what I mean? Same. Of course, there's of course there's questions I still have. Like yeah. why was he able to, to protect himself or whatever he did from Voldemort? I don't know. Like how come he lived? Why did Voldemort want to kill him? I mean, we kind of have an yeah. idea. Why but... is he so obsessed with him? Yeah. Why Why are you so obsessed with me? Because it's like Dumbledore yeah. even said at the end of the book, like, I can't tell you that yet. So yeah. some, Which someone did, knows. That drove me crazy a little bit. Ask me anything. Well, don't ask me that. <laughs> I can't tell you that. <laughs> Yeah. Um, but I mean, it kind of, I think that was a way of communicating that that information still is lingering yeah. and hanging on purpose. On purpose. Yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. Um, so I too am excited to read the second one. I feel like it had a great <laughs> ending. Um, there was nothing that went unanswered that I feel like was frustrating, you know, that it wasn't answered. So yeah, yeah. I just, I feel good about going into the next one. Ready. I'm ready. Ooh. Let's do it. Buckle up. Buckle Let's up. Let's go. Um, so... That being said, I feel like we'll kind of, we'll wrap it, wrap it down with one fun <laughs> fact. We're not going to wrap it up. We're going to wrap it down. Yep. 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 Let's do it. Um, okay. So I found just a little bit of fun. So this is like a fun little, like something, it could be, we're keeping it spoiler free this part. I don't know why though. I just, I'm thinking about it now. Like, but if you guys <laughs> have made it this far, it doesn't need yeah. to be spoiler free. So I don't know, maybe because we'll share it on social or something, but, um, it's just something cool that we looked up that we found about Harry Potter books, movies, lore, etc. What have you. Yeah. What have you. If you have a cool piece of like Harry Potter lore, maybe send it oh, into yeah. us. Cause that would be cool too. For you guys who have been yeah. like in this world, for you know 20 years now let us know yeah so okay here's mine of the week um so harry ron and hermione's names all had deeper meanings harry is the middle english version of henry which was a name popular for english kings because harry is a leader Hmm. ronald comes from the old norse (laughs) (laughs) ragnavalder (laughs) <laughs> a title for a ruler's advisor because he's Harry's best friend, obviously. And then Hermione's name is from Shakespeare's The Winter's Tale and was just meant to be clever since her parents are scholarly. 
Oh, yeah. I, I, like, I like that. I like knowing like the story behind where these characters get their names. If an author just like mm-hmm. pulled them out of thin air or like if there was a plan. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. yeah. So I thought that was an interesting like little tidbit of information. Also good for like the first episode because we're just kind of getting to know these characters. For sure. Yeah. 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 I'm excited to see that because Hermione did, wasn't really like in with them as early as I thought too. Yeah. Because obviously we always see the trio together. So I was like, oh, there's a, like, is a little bit of an interesting backstory with them. Mm-hmm. So it's great. Yeah. It's great. It is great. Yeah. All right. So I feel like that pretty much covers Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone. Thank you for book being one. here. Ooh. Yeah, book one. Let us know if you liked this format. If you think that, you know, yeah. having a mini episode where we kind of, yeah, just react to it, how the book made us feel, what we thought about it, do just like obviously a very brief overview. If that works for you, yeah. give us the feedback. Yeah, yeah let us know. Curious. Let us know. And make sure you guys subscribe, follow us anywhere, like to listen to your favorite podcasts, including YouTube. And follow us on Instagram and TikTok at Besties in the Books Podcast. And if you want to be reading these with us, go on, jump on in. The water's fine over on Fable. It's the water cooler of the future. Yes. So that water is more than fine. It is great and it is chatty. And and tasty. And tasty. (laughs) And that's at Besties in the Books Pod. No, sorry. Besties Besties in in the the Book Book Club. Club. Yep. Mm -hmm. yes so come check us out there and i was just thinking about it i was like technically we could say see you next tuesday because we will see you next tuesday but also see you next friday too yeah so both so both so see you next tuesday and friday friday all right (laughs) Bye. bye guys